Welcome to another inspiring story of Vokari. Today, I will be introducing you to Father Roy Balakin, the Assistant General for the Congregation of the Holy Cross. Hello, Father Roy. Nice of you to be here with us today. Thank you. What we like to know here when we're doing the episodes of Vokari is your story, your story from the beginning to the end on how you, who you are now as a priest. So we'd like to start off with your childhood, where you were born, how many siblings you have, mm -hmm. what you went to school. I come from a southern part of India, okay. a state called Kerala, actually in the diocese of Kadamangalam. Uh, I was born there to a very devout Catholic family. Uh, we are nine in our family. Oh, that's and, uh, is that nine children? Or? Nine children, oh, wow. yeah. And what's interesting is I am the ninth child. <laughs> <laughs> we are of four, uh, four boys and uh, five girls. So somehow the family was so much influential in my life. Since I happened to be the youngest in the family, I always got lots of love <laughs> and of course i got lots of corrections too <laughs> oh, so yeah. that that helped me to be the person that i am today so i think the foundation laid in my life in my catholic family the practices at home how we were brought up that was what were, the, what were your daily practices uh well we were going to school as usual and then i did my primary schooling up to the fifth grade in my own village, okay. uh, and very close to my house, so it was no matter of that. But then fifth to 10th grade, I had to walk four hours wow. to reach my school. So every day? Every day we walked about up and down, two hours that side, two hours oh my goodness. home. Uh, we come back from school, and then we also do a lot of household work, um, grazing the cows, doing household other things, assisting in the uh, family. Such a large but, family. Yeah, large, a large family. But one thing very conspicuous I remember in those days that uh, we had to do our prayers every day. There was no, <laughs> no escapism from that, <laughs> you know. If you don't do your evening prayers, no food for you in the oh, evening. Okay. I mean, that's strict our parents. Yeah, that's true. So we always prayed uh, the rosary. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow because of that, Mother Mary has a great influence in my life. Oh, nice. Because I think it is through her intercession that I was able to mm, move ahead in my life. Mm -hmm. So and you I, had that feeling in your heart. Yes. And from your, your childhood upbringing. But what about your siblings? You being the youngest, did you have any older <laughs> siblings that were feeling uh, the same way? Or? Uh, no. I mean, somehow they all, because of they had to work a lot at home and they got all settled in family way. Mm -hmm. But they were all so proud of me, and they all encouraged me so much oh, okay. uh, to, to be a priest, to be a, a religious. So mm -hmm. we have very good contacts even now, or even those days, they would always phone up and write letters and those oh, kind nice. of things. So they always encouraged. And it's a proud moment that oh. uh, I have been chosen by God to, <laughs> to be well, a priest. Nice. But I must add that uh, the parish priest, mm -hmm. Uh, the priests who have come by in our parish, the local place, the religious nuns, they all played a great role in my life because their encouragement, their instructions, the way they um, advised and prayed for me, I would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> that all contributed. And of course, I know that my parents, now they are in heaven, but uh, they were daily on their knees praying for mm -hmm. me. So yes. I think a lot of other factors have contributed to mm -hmm. us. Uh, me becoming a, a priest. So you said from 5th to 10th, you had to walk two hours. Yes. Uh, what happened after the 10th grade? After that, uh, then uh, we came across these groups of uh, priests that they said they have missionary endeavors within India itself. And are, if you are interested in that, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined them and then I went through the various educations and process and secular studies and all that. And then uh, about another 10 years more, I studied along with them and seminary studies and all that. But I, I always kept my focus to be a missionary. Okay. So did you have any, so you didn't have any changes thought when you went through the, the undergraduate studies and being in the secular uh, life? No, because no? Uh, somehow my focus was very clear. 
Okay. okay, so even if I was doing undergrad studies, mm -hmm. that was for a purpose, not for a different, another deviation okay. in my life. I never, I never thought about that. Oh. Even. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a lot of discipline and dedication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but brought by the grace of God yes, and Our it Lady. Yes, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you were in the seminary, how did you like that? What was that like for you? Now when I look back, I th it has its own safety walls, definitely. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, it has prepared me more than being an intellectual preparation where we do philosophy, theology, and... Uh, interpretations of the Word of God and all that. I think uh, I am really formed because of the seminary. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we think of seminary as a very uh, structured way of, but that has brought in a lot of discipline in my life mm -hmm. uh, with the regular practices of uh, spiritual exercises and uh, uh, devotions and then uh, one of the most important aspects of my seminary life is going for spiritual directions. Okay. You know, especially when you are challenged uh, within your own life, uh, be it in our evangelical life of poverty, of obedience, of chastity. As human persons, right, I right. think we do have certain challenges in those. Mm -hmm. But then we are able to go and discuss with the, or converse with the, a spiritual director and then he would guide you advise you how you can go about and so I would say the totality of a person as a priest a lot of formation we we do get apart from the academic studies that we do mm -hmm. for our life okay. and I would say I had one more word saying that such directions in life is not just confined to the seminary days okay mm -hmm. so this life even now I have a spiritual director Oh, okay. uh, because I converse with him and I can talk with him over phone. If I am able to meet with him in person, I speak to him what are the challenges that I f face, uh, both in personal life as well as in, in my ministry, mm -hmm. in relationships, in dealing. There are many issues. So I think uh, guidance of another person uh, in my life has been always very important. So, so you look back upon the seminary as something that just really helped you, formed you so well. Did you have any fun? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because it is in the seminary that we build a strong community life. Okay. So we become friends to one another. Mm -hmm. And we also come from diverse cultures, not just from my own state or my own community. We come from different diverse cultures of people who speak different languages who have different types of uh, dress code or different food habits. All these are Upbringing, different. So we celebrate one another. Mm -hmm. We have lots of so joy nice. and we even make attempts to learn others' language and then understand them, have worship in their own languages. And so that lots of fun. Lots of course, of then we were very good at many games and mm -hmm. lots of lots. exercises and those kinds so of So you things. enjoyed it? Yeah. Uh, I might also say about seminary life, we were helped a lot to be leaders. Okay. So the life in the seminary is uh, led by the seminarians themselves. So it's oh, not that okay. I am there and then there are so many people to serve mm -hmm. me or take care of me. No, you have to take care of your yeah. house. This is your house. So we become in charges for liturgy, for, um, let's say, for food services mm -hmm. or cleaning services or so any, any, anything you can name, okay? <laughs> so that way we have been always formed into a leadership position. And I always believe whatever kind of priest you are, uh, the moment you become priest, you are a leader. You are yes. a public person. There is nothing secret in you. <laughs> <laughs> so true. the seminary life helps a, a lot in that, yeah. So um, you mentioned that your parents are no longer here, but were they here for your ordination? Yes, they were here. And one of the biggest blessings in my life was when they died, both of them, one 12 years ago, another one two years ago, my mother died. I was present at home. Oh. So that was the biggest blessings mm -hmm. that uh, God gave me. It's a privilege that usually many priests do not get because That's we are true. always We're away always from our place. homes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When you were ordained, what did that feel like for you when you finally became <laughs> ordained? I have, I would say, two feelings. Uh, one is, of course, in human terms, it was a great feeling. 
fine. What a celebration, mm -hmm. euphoria. <laughs> and you know, there are so many priests, maybe another 50, 60 priests kind of celebrating, all family, friends, and uh, uh, something like a thousand people gathered wow, for that's a lot. Uh, yeah, a lot, you <laughs> that's know. A lot of people. Yes, a family is big, so mm -hmm. we have plenty of people. And the entire parish was present. And so on the level of uh, what uh, celebration it is on a it is a high point okay. kind of thing mm -hmm. okay but at the same time i personally believe it is not simply the ordination that makes you a priest in the sense of uh, ordination is a ceremony and it is a liturgical event yes. that uh, is a sacramental thing yes. but that alone is not what really makes a priest a priest I think it is the formation that has followed him uh, to that point. Mm -hmm. And then how are you going to live your life, you know? So it is uh, basically uh, ordination, I, I would say, is a midpoint. <laughs> okay. I mean, oh, sacra okay. yeah, sacramentally, yes, yes. that makes you an, a priest. Mm -hmm. But then that's not the whole priesthood or things mm -hmm. like that. So it's up to that point you have come and then how you are going to live. And, and in both, would... I would say it's a God's hand at work. As the Assistant General, where are you um, located at? Uh, currently, I'm located in Rome. Yeah. That's where the uh, congregational headquarters, what we call our uh, generalate, what mm -hmm. we say. Uh, the Congregation of Holy Cross, founded in uh, 1835 in France, Lema. The founder is from there. Uh, uh, he was uh, beatified in 2010. In oh, fact, nice. that's the year I joined in Rome, <laughs> <laughs> the year of the beatification. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. um, he's from France, and he's the one who sent missionaries to United States in 1842, oh. I think, they came okay. to. And of course, we started the big Notre Dame University in Indiana. South oh, Bend. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Oh. So that's okay. Congregation of Holy Cross. Well, because I know yeah. it's French, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't equate it. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. So we are currently working uh, in 16 countries, all world over, uh, about 1,300 members. So that's headquarters or general aid, what we call, is mm -hmm. in Rome. Oh, okay. uh, the current superior general is, uh, is uh, an American, mm -hmm. uh, Father Richard Warner, and I am the second assistant to him. Assistant. And then our one speciality of our congregation is uh, we are composed of priests and brothers. Oh, okay. okay. Each have got their own provincial independent ministry and work, but at the general aid, we have one general administration, both for priests and for uh, the brothers. Mm -hmm. So we are equal from, from our perspective. Mm -hmm. you know? And then in an equal uh, society, trying to work, collaborate, mm -hmm. do the ministry work of God together. So um, in doing a little bit of studies, uh, uh, Father Patrick Payton yes. was also from the Congregation from congregation. of Holy Cross. He belongs to the, what we call then the Eastern Province of the Congregation of Holy Cross. And you're from the... I am from northeastern province of India. Northeast. So he was from eastern in, uh, in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's the one who did a lot of uh, uh, ministry for the families. And I think yes, people here rosary. are quite familiar with him. Yes. Uh, family that prays together, stays together. Yes. And these days also Holy Cross's, Holy Cross family ministry is big. Uh, we are also having it in 16 countries the Holy Cross family ministry, oh, nice. the same work that Father Patrick Payton did, mm -hmm. uh, we are continuing. Oh, uh, quite big in Manila, mm -hmm. now India we have started, in the Caribbeans, and mm -hmm. we're trying to see how we can make that as one of the primary apostolate apart from education that we do as part of congregation's ministry. Okay, Yeah. nice. We are hoping and praying that uh, he would soon be beatified. <laughs> well, uh, yes, yeah, yes. That's what mm -hmm. we are. One of the things I like to ask priests are, um, what advice would you give to a young person who's con possibly considering the priesthood? Um, I think each individual has to answer some personal call to the Lord, is it? And in that call, what are you basically looking forward, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, if I were to tell about my experience, I really thought of how I can do God's work. That was my that was concern, your desire. My desire. How do you get that desire? Uh, how how would people get that desire? Uh, I would say perhaps the surroundings, perhaps your upbringing, the cultural context in which you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, that all can contribute. Mm-hmm. But then somehow deep within your heart, there is a, what I call a deepest longing in a person. What is that deepest longing? Something you know, that you're looking something, at. Uh, something which you look beyond yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just the immediate results that you would get, you know. Um, immediately am I so much concerned about uh, so much of wealth I need? Is it, immediately am I so much concerned about the power I would like to have? or a lot of pleasure that I would like to have. No, none of those things, at least for me. Mm-hmm. So it is something beyond. Then I always found that I should be some use for the others, no? Because God has given me a life. It is not for me personally to be enjoyed, to be enjoyed in the sense of, not in a negative sense, you know? Right. Not for selfish motivations or anything of that sort, but it is meant for others. So how best I can give my life for the others. I don't know for how it comes, but it came. <laughs> and I, that itself is what I call, it's, a, it's a God's mystery. Mm-hmm. It's a mystery of God. Uh, do I have direct answers? I do not know. But mm-hmm. somehow uh, the situations and the surroundings that uh, brought me into that realization that the deepest longing in my life would be giving my life for the others. Mm-hmm. So That's what would be the model. best way? That's, That's what nice. I, I'm thinking, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like you said, we're, we're not here for ourselves. Yes, that's what I, I, mm-hmm. I, I believe. Uh, so because of that, I would say certain challenges, mm-hmm. certain sacrifices that you are called to make, they are nothing, I would say. So because sacrifices or challenges, not the end in itself, you know. For example, you, say, you, you talk in terms of sacrifices, uh, we as religious make the evangelical counsels of three vows, poverty, obedience, yes. and chastity, okay? So if you are looking for immediately, we may consider these three things as something lost for you. We are losing when you, when you vow to be right. cha- a mm-hmm. chaste person or a, when you uh, want to live a poor life or when you are, want to live an obedient life. So we can say this is something uh, kind of a loss for you, immediately reactions or thinking. Yeah. But you look beyond that. It is not something lost. Yes, it is a loss, but it is something which you can uh, gain more in one sense, okay? You, you you gain more of happiness, more of joy, not by these, virtue, these uh, actions, mm-hmm. but then giving your life for others. And that life, uh, what is that giving my life for others? I always thought it is making God known, loud and mm-hmm. said, you know. That's why I always thought of uh, uh, missionary life, evangelization, so out. preaching out gospel mm-hmm. message. Uh, there are even in our, my own country, there are lots of people who still do not know about Jesus, mm-hmm. sharing the person of Jesus with others. Mm-hmm. This is what is Jesus. That would bring you joy, that would bring you happiness. Mm-hmm. So that's what I I believe and I thought. (laughs) So my message to the young people is definitely uh, look at yourself and see what is it that you are really longing to have in your life. And then listen to God's word. Uh, Listen to the spirit of the Lord speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And then you would realize perhaps it is something else. Otherwise, how would you explain to, even in now my congregation, there are very many university students who are wanting to become priests, mm-hmm. becoming religious in this country itself. So there are, I think, about uh, 10 ordinations we have every oh, year. Yes. They are yes. all university students who, are, who could have a fantastic career in themselves if yes. they want, if they wish. Mm-hmm. But I think they answered that call or that answered that question, what is it deepest longing for me in my life? So and that they find, well, and there's a peacefulness yeah. that you, we can see a peacefulness in you. Yeah. Uh, peacefulness, there's... Oh, uh, yeah, no doubt about uh, that. A lot of joy. So that's mm-hmm. what I say. 
never think about priesthood as something a loss. No, it's always gaining, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that you are able to share the message of Christ with uh, so many people. And in more than that, I think it is not in building institutions and you do, you know, you reach at a high level of positions. No, yeah. but in simple ways, insignificant ways, you can touch the lives of others. This is what I have experienced a lot. Yes. And if at all people remember me as a priest, it is not so much for the huge, uh, you know, institutional mm. approach that uh, we do have, which is necessary, mm. even in the mission areas, we have to build churches, we have to build right. schools, mm -hmm. we have to build community centers. These are all necessary and you have done. But today, if people ask, do you remember Father Roy? Yes, for what? Not for the schools and churches that they built, but he has touched my life. That's my yeah. happiness and my joy, I would say. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I believe you've touched mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we, we as a priest uh, somehow, mm, it's a privileged position by God's grace that you can enter into the lives of others. Yes. Uh, in, it's the, very, it, in our really conversations, mm -hmm. in our sacramental life, and in the family challenges, struggles that they go through, mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we can be instruments in building bridges. We can be instruments in uh, uh, reconstructing what is broken, yes. uh, what is damaged. Uh, when we are true. able to do that and we are able to build a relationship among people, among between parents and uh, children and children and parents, among the spouses, mm -hmm. all that, you know. So that's right, the biggest right. uh, ministry or work. <laughs>
God is the one who is leading our life. So we need to endure. So yeah. once you endure, then God will see what is the best. Yeah. And he will yes. take care of that. No? Mm -hmm. And my third saying is, uh, of course, beatification has not taken place, but Mother Teresa of Calcutta oh, you must yes. have heard about her. Yes, know? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The wonderful services that she does for the poorest of the poor, which no ordinary human person can ever no, think about. Doing. That's true. This is something, a great challenge for my life every mm -hmm. day. You know, am I doing that? Can I reach anywhere near to that? You know, I'm no. far from that. Is so it, it remains a challenge for me, so I admire her. Yeah, because so. it didn't seem like she that was an issue for her. It yeah. was like the, anybody she could see Jesus in. And as, as a person, I know yeah. it's hard for me also. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's something to look to try and remember yeah. and think about. So I, I, I see in these persons, uh, these individuals, God's hand at work. Yes. Okay, it's because of that they mm. are able to do, you know. Continue. We are also admiring so much. We have our own another saint, Saint Brother Andre, uh, who was 40 years a doorkeeper at uh, Montreal. Oh, okay. Okay, and he has turned out to be the a saint now. He, is, he was canonized uh, in 2010. So 40 years as a doorkeeper. How wow. is that person a holy <laughs> person, a saint? But he always led people to Saint Joseph, and millions have received healing touch. Yes. And, Today, I think one of the world's biggest shrines of St. Joseph is built by St. Brother oh, Andre nice. in Montreal. Nice. So uh, in all this, I, I see uh, no matter how insignificant you are, mm -hmm. but God has a purpose in your life. And that insignificance turned out to be significance for mm -hmm. God, significant for the church, mm -hmm. significant for the people. So Nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. And no. from a mustard seed, he can make everything. Yes, you're right. Yes, <laughs> you're yes. right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Another question. When you uh, meet our Heavenly Father in Heaven, mm -hmm. what would you like Him to say to you, or what would you like to say to Him? Uh, I would tell Him, <laughs> let me enjoy your peace, a humble and humble servant of yours. Mm -hmm. No. I'm not uh, a great person or anything, but you have made me who I am with my uh, brokenness, with my inequalities, or with my uh, negative whatever is there. But everything, who the person that I am is his grace. Yes. So I want to say thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you oh. to my Heavenly Father, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Father Roy. It's been such a pleasure to meet you with you and hear your story. Um, it really has touched my heart. And Thank like you. I said, we can be missionaries within our own communities okay. at any time. Would you please give uh, me and our Shalom viewers a blessing? Yeah. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your numerous blessings upon us. We ask your blessings upon us. We may always fulfill your mission, your work on this earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God come upon you and bless you from all harm and danger, keep you in his company. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you.